Well, I'm talking about the difficulty of speaking while female. It's harder than it looks. Now, I'm going to start with a story. I was sitting next to a man at dinner, remember that? And I very politely asked him all about himself. And he told me at great length about his life and his work and his career and his family and his milkman's nephew's Dalmatians. I'm making that up, of course. But, you know, after about 45 minutes, I knew everything there was to know about him. And he hadn't asked me a single question. So I smiled sweetly and I said, well, do you know, it's been fascinating hearing all about you. But I think according to conversational etiquette, now's the time for you to ask, what do I do? Ah, he said, what do I do? Well, <laughs> and started expatiating all about himself again. Now, this is what I call conversational man spreading. And I think probably the women in this audience will find it quite familiar. Not all men do it, of course, but it happens a lot. And I had another story from a university vice chancellor, that's like the head of a university, a woman, who went to dinner at an Oxford college, sat next to the head of the college, and he talked all about himself all the way through the starter, all the way through the main course. And then he said to her, well, that's enough about me, and turned to the woman on the other side, and even asked her what she did. So as a woman, it is often hard to get a word in edgeways. On average, men speak more than women in every kind of public setting, whether it's at meetings, in educational settings, in political settings. Mm. There was a great academic study done when they asked men and women to look at three paintings by Dürer and just to talk into a tape recorder for as long as they liked about these paintings. And this study made me laugh because not only did the women talk on average for 3.17 minutes and the men for 13 minutes, in other words, four times as long, but those figures weren't even accurate because three of the men were still talking when their 30 minute cassettes ran out. <laughs> so why does this happen? Well, it starts very early in childhood. So at school, for instance, teachers pay far more attention to boys in class than they do to girls. So they reward boys for answering questions, for speaking up, they're much more likely to call boys to the front of the class and they reward girls for being quiet and well behaved. So in effect, they're silencing these girls. And what happens as a result is the, that the boys feel entitled to disproportionate speaking time. And this then continues into adulthood. And as a result, men will on average talk much more in meetings and women will feel more self-conscious about taking up even proportionate time. So you will be much more likely to hear a woman saying, oh God, did I talk too much? Quite unusual to hear a man say that. And women are actually quite rational in asking themselves this question, because first of all, studies show that if we hear a man and a woman talking for exactly the same amount of time, we will think that the woman dominated the conversation. So there is that misperception in the first place. But secondly, women actually do get punished for talking too much. And I use the air quotes because, of course, we have this distorted perception of how much they've spoken. So another study showed, um, showed the participants a case study of a CEO. And the CEO was described as talking more than other people, which is quite usual for a CEO. And if that CEO was called Jennifer, then the participants marked her down significantly for competence and for leadership skills if she taught more than other people. If the CEO was called John, he was actually marked up for competence and leadership skills. And when the participants were told that Jennifer actually spoke less than other people, her ratings shot up. So it's not just that we're penalized for talking more or even talking for an equal amount of time. We're often not allowed to talk in the first place. And so women are much more likely to be interrupted and talked over than men are, particularly by men, however senior they are. So a study was done of the US Supreme Court in which women make up only a third of the justices, but they suffer two thirds of all interruptions. In other words, they're four times more likely to be interrupted by their male colleagues, 96% of the time by men. Why does this happen? It all happens because of something that I've termed the authority gap. 
the difference between the amount of authority we're prepared to accord to men and to women. And if you want to find out more about it, please read my book, The Authority Gap, or go to theauthoritygap.com. Thank you.